Hey friends, Chris here finishing up this week. We've been talking about the power of words. Watch your mouth. Well, today in Luke chapter 1, here's the title, Zip It Up Zach. Zip It Up Zachariah. You remember he was at the golden altar. The angel Gabriel appeared to him and said, you've been praying your whole life for a son. Well, God's answered your prayer and you're going to have a son and his name's going to be called John. Well, what did Zachariah do? <laughs> he opened his big mouth just like a lot of us do and said, how's this going to happen seeing I'm an old man? Well, listen. He was negating the promise of God with his profession. So Luke 1 and verse 20, the angel said, Behold, you will be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things are performed because you believe not my words which shall be performed in their season. In other words, uh, you, you uh, doubt in the presence of the angel of God, you might get lockjaw. For nine months he was unable to speak and therefore unable to negate the promise of God. Could you imagine that Mary moved in with Elizabeth uh, and the, he had two pregnant yakking women in the house and couldn't respond. All he could do was make sign language. So let's talk about that. Zip it up, Zach. Number one, a divine promise can be negated by a doubting profession. In Isaiah 14 and 27, it says, the Lord of hosts has purposed it and who can disannul it? Uh, you say, well, if God says something, God purposes something, it's going to be done. Not necessarily the case. Man has the ability to negate and to disannul something that God has purposed. We read that in Mark 7 and verse 23. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. And in Hebrews 4 and verse 2, the word that was preached to them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So if you're going to have the promise, you also have to maintain the profession. Number two, when in doubt... Don't. I've said that before. When in doubt, don't, or at least don't voice it. His problem is that he voiced it. Mike Murdoch said that God's only pleasure is to be believed. His only pain is to be doubted. Well, I don't know if that's the case or not, but I do know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So when we say what he says, I'm sure it brings him great pleasure. You know, we're to ask in faith, nothing wavering, but then it says in Hebrews 10 and verse 23, to hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. So in either case, if you believe God, you will not doubt and you will not waver. Third, double-mindedness is revealed in double-tonguedness. Is that a word? Well, I make up words sometimes on here. But you know, he said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. David said in Psalm 12 and 2 that they speak with flattering lips and a double heart or a double tongue. Paul's said in 1 Timothy 3 and 8 that deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued. You know, some people tongue-tied in the middle and flopping on both ends. You never know what they believe because they're saying yes and no and I believe and don't believe. I'm healed. I'm not healed. It's a double tongue. And he said, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And so number four, if you don't learn how to zip it up, you might as well hang it up. Nobody is going to receive a miracle who does not get their talk in line with God's word. Amen. So if you don't zip it up, learn to zip it up. Seal your lip with polygrip. And then number five, let's close with this. Get your talk in line and you'll be the next in line. How do you like to be the next in line for a miracle? Will you get your talk in line you're next in line. You remember when John was finally born and all the family gathered together and they're going to sign the birth certificate after the father's name. His name is Zechariah. But John, uh, Zechariah rather, motions for a writing tablet or a chalkboard and he writes these words. His name is John. Why is that? That's what the angel named him. He got his talk in line with the angel with a, with a stick of chalk in his hand and said his name is John. And the moment that he did that, Luke 1 and verse 64 said immediately his tongue was loosed. He was filled with the Spirit. And for the next 12 verses, he prophesied powerfully with the anointing of God in him. Listen, you want to get in line, get your words in line. And when you line up with heaven, listen, you're at the head of the line and the head of the class and you're the next one in line for a miracle. Chris, I hope you've enjoyed this week. Tomorrow's Sunday. Tune in. Make sure that you watch our corner posts as we round the corner and start in next week with more on this subject. Watch your mouth. God bless you. Like if you like. Share this with a friend and have a great day in the Lord.